Here you go, darling. Thank you so much. Mm, yummy. Mm. Monday morning, folks. Back to work. Back on the laptop. I've got loads of emails. I should have done some of them on Friday afternoon, but you know, long weekend off. Well, not long weekend, it's Monday, we're back to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can do your emails. I think I'm gonna have the rest of the day off. No, I'm gonna have well a long won't. weekend. No, you bloody well won't. <laughs> we left that beautiful pine forest and we drove south of Cadiz for about an hour to a place called Conil, Conil de la Frontera, and we checked into this campsite. We arrived on Friday, which is probably the worst day to arrive at a campsite, Friday in the summer, in the busiest time of the summer. It was crazy. We took the last available spot, bit of a contrast to where we'd spent the last sort of three, four days. And then on Sunday, most people leave, they're going back to work. So it's a lot more tranquilo, a lot more chilled out. We have actually been here before. We've been to Conil before, beautiful little town, lovely beaches. You've got big white sandy beaches. You've got little cliffs and coves, stunning area. And we've stayed at this campsite before. It's set in this little eucalyptus forest. So every plot has shade. Yeah, basically it was 36 degrees on Friday and we really needed to find a campsite. The plan was to stay around Scipiona, so we went to a couple of campsites there. The first one we tried was completely full. Ah, oh, it's a shame. And it looks like a really nice campsite right on the beach, full until the 28th of August. Oh. Then we tried a couple of motorhome stops stroke campsites for the only shaded spots were taken. Quite a nice beach, quite low key and stuff, but again, there's no shade. Little restaurant on the beach. We thought we can't park up here in 36 degrees full sun. And then we went into Chiperoni. Sorry, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. There was a parking by the port. It was just a big car park, zero shade, 36 degrees. I mean, Nick and I will probably be all right, but it's for the doggies. And that's why we ended up here. So this lovely little campsite that we're at is called Camping Eucalyptus. Now, I don't know where it gets its name from. Haven't got a clue. But yeah, great little campsite. It's got everything you need, water fill-ups, electricity points, lovely little restaurant, little supermarket. It's got an amazing pool, which is one of the reasons we love it. Basically, the only part of the campsite that doesn't have shade is the pool area. It's just like a little clearing in the middle of the campsite. The location is pretty good as well. It's five minutes walk to the edge of town and then another 10 minutes to the beaches. So you've got loads of restaurants not too far away. And the price with two dogs with electric is 37 euros. Showers are clean, toilets are good, and you get toilet paper thrown in, which is always a bonus. So yeah, definitely worth a little stop off. Are you ready? I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. It's time to go, isn't it? Time to check out. And just like that, we have left the campsite. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will just update because Nick made a slight boo-boo on the price. It was a little bit more than what we thought it would be. It worked out 43 euros per night. Obviously the campsites put their prices right up in the summer. And Nick actually seen a campsite for 70... Five, 75 euros. As if you're gonna pay 75 euros. Anyways, we are now on a little mission to find some parking in the shade. Um, Easier said than done that. Ooh. Yeah, I know, yeah. Um, so we're kind of, we, we are looking, we, we're looking quite good here though, darling. Oh darling, is this a little pine forest here? We've come sort of a bit, not we've not gone to the beach as such we've come a little bit inland where all the pines are so hopefully we can find somewhere because it is very very toasty we're a little bit late leaving the campsite um so it's it's kind of lunchtime already but let's see if there's somewhere around here is this it just one spot yeah so now we're here let's just take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor of the video and that is hover Take it away, Harry. That's more like it, isn't it? Look what we found, a lovely little pine forest. So we like our little pine forest and it's a perfect place to escape the heat and get a bit of shade. Another good reason to come here, it's a perfect place to have a little play with our friend, Harry Hover. This is a Hover X1 Air self-flying camera drone. Come here, little Harry. Come here. Oh, a little bit windy. This little drone 
is the most fun you're ever going to have because you don't have to worry unless you're in really high winds but it's just so much fun no skill involved look at that look how small that is just fold it up put it in your pocket no getting your phone out no nothing like that just get it out turn it on and then press this button to decide which automated flight mode you want. So you've got hover where it will just hover in the air and when you move it will follow you. You've got orbit where it will fly around you. You've got bird's eye it will fly up, zoom it will fly out. And um, you've got spiral where you can change the height of it. So whether it's above you, it's rising, it's medium or it's low. You've got follow me where it follows you from behind. You've got dolly, which is the one we just used, which is new, where it will just follow you from the front. There's also a vertical mode for the other side social media so you can change it to portrait it films up to 2.7 in 30 frames or you can film 1080 in 60 frames so you can slow it down and there's even a hdr so yeah it's got loads of little things to play around with let's try this one 1.5 meters orbit so you, 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 i can just stand here and pose now and it'll just make me look good don't have to worry i can just be chatting with you guys having a look at the birds don't have to think about anything just my little personal camera. Come here, Harry, come here. Now, is he gonna come back to me? Yes, he is. So there you go, that's the Hover X1. And if you wanna find out more about this cool little gadget, then we will leave all of the details in the description box below. And it is also drop proof. Right, let's get some blinking lunch. by any chance that's why we have the hair bubble so it can go on otherwise it continues to just blow off and blow off until the whole lot is blown off very romantic darling look at that like a proper restaurant with little clips there <laughs> <laughs> love it wow Yes, that is just a plate full of lettuce. It's going to taste better than it looks. So oh, yeah, got... that looks pretty good. I did that overdo your, good. your wraps a little bit. I might just have no wrap. So you just put a piece of the lettuce like that, and then we've got this salad, which is basically Nick's favorite broad beans. Rocket, pepper, tomatoes. You take that kitchen roll from Cabbage, out your vest onion, or... garlic, red onion. Just basically everything we could, we could get together and put in a salad and then olive oil mustard all sorts it's going to be lovely i think and then you just eat that darling you i get it i get it. it thanks darling yeah and you can have like low carb and just have the lettuce leaf full of salad which i might do oh i forgot about the avocado we're supposed to oh, we're supposed to spread a bit of avocado we, we, we can still spread a bit it's of avocado. Ruined. No, 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 the salad can, is ruined we can spread the avocado <laughs> there of course we can that's going to be absolutely delicious i tell you now darling you're going to love it look at that beautiful avocado and you take that kitchen mole out that's really putting me off <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't blow away again if she manages to squash it in properly. Is that warbler or a chaffinch? I think it's a green finch. Green finch. European green finch. Mmm. That is really nice. Told Loads you. of flavours going on. Now I know what you're thinking. That's probably the best looking salad you've ever seen. Thank you, darling. Very romantic, case. this, isn't it? Look at this Very table romantic. Cars. Very. <laughs> now, so no, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, they, they were in a pine forest last week. They just spent four days there. They've just popped to a campsite briefly, not seen anything, and they're back in a pine forest. Is that all we're going to see from this channel? Well, 
Is yes, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did actually leave the campsite. We did have a little wander into Conhill. We have actually been to Conhill a few times before. Beautiful town, lovely beaches. It's quite a touristy town, but beautiful nonetheless. The typical Andalusian whitewash town. Loads of restaurants, loads of little shops, little cobbled streets, beautiful church. It always has a market on down on the beachfront. It's got a massive beach, lovely. So anyway, we had a little wander around town. Thought we'd go and get some food. They had the 100 Montaditos restaurant. Now, if you've been to Spain before, they have these restaurants dotted around and they're really cool. It's a cheap and cheerful little place. They've got loads of these Montaditos, which are like mini baguettes amongst other things. So we've come to a place called 100 Montaditos. And there's a funny story behind this place. Basically, this happened quite a few years ago, well before the doggies. More we... than 10 years ago, because they're it? 10. And we didn't have dogs, because we flew to Barcelona. Went for five days, and it literally rained pretty much the whole time. Um, Barcelona's beautiful, see, I've been there before. I wanted to show Sarah, so we didn't get to see much. But anyway, on the last day, the day we we're flying back to Malaga, my parents were coming the next day as well. On the last day, the sun was coming out. So we found a, a nice plaza, a nice square, found one of these 100 Montaditos restaurants. I think it was the first time we've been to one. Yeah. Get there, the beer's really cheap as well. We're sat in the sun in this square, loving it. I'm Trying in... all these different Montaditos, yeah. like tacos. Oh, let's have another beer. This is lovely. It was a really good atmosphere in there and everything. And then, yeah, we left a li little bit late. Then we had to get a train or two trains. We had to get an underground train I think and then got another train to take us to the airport got on the underground train got to the platform where the train was leaving to take us to the airport got on the train sat there pleasantly satisfied after our hundred Montaditos we didn't have a hundred well, we Montaditos we'd had quite a few though <laughs> and a few beers but sat on the train looking out the window sun was shining finally going oh that's a nice beach and then we thought Hold Why on. are we going past beaches? We're not supposed to be going past beaches. We're supposed to be going to the airport. The airport <laughs> isn't past beaches. We looked on the map on our phones and we found out that we were basically heading towards Tarragona. Heading south towards Tarragona. We've been on the train probably for like half an hour, 45 minutes. We asked someone and they said you can't basically get off. We'd missed our flight, hadn't we? Completely missed it because we were enjoying our 100 Montaditos and our pints. So <laughs> then... In Tarragona, we had to wait around. I think we got a night train, a night train to Granada, which took like, I don't know, five hours was years ago. And then we had to get a bus from Granada to Malaga and then pick up our car and drive back to our village <laughs> to arrive just in time for my parents, I think. I think your parents had to stop somewhere and have a like leisurely lunch because yeah. we were late back and we were supposed to be back the day before. Oh, it was quite a funny story. I mean, I think that's the only time I've ever missed a flight. Yeah. And it was all because of this 100 Montadito place. So that's why we had to go to the 100 Montadito. So we were in there last night and we were just chatting about that story. Anyway, yeah, so definitely recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> Not missing your flight, the 100 Montaditos restaurant. Cheers. So there you go. We have done more than just pine forests over this last week and the campsite. We have actually been to the beach as well. quite difficult going to the beach because the dogs aren't really allowed on the beach plus they are really really busy even like early in the morning we went quite early and they were already like full of people everywhere even like the walking beach was just like constant and it's just very hot there's no shaded parking and yeah I think this coast is absolutely beautiful amazing but it's very very touristy and it's definitely best if you're in a camper van or a motorhome or something like that to visit outside of outside of the summer like shoulder seasons would be really good or even in the winter so that's something to take into consideration that's all i've got to say scoffed all the salad <laughs> didn't she you had more than me <laughs> he had much more than me yeah if you believe that <laughs> Who do you think's the greedy one here? Who do you think's the greedy one? <laughs> what are you trying to say? No, you're the greedy one. Mm. It is really nice around here, but in the summer it's busy. And yeah, the dream of just parking up, taking your dogs for a, 
run along the beach and all that is just not reality because not there's just no parking in the shade. This is the closest parking in the shade. It's about three kilometers from the beach. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you can't just, um, obviously, yeah, if you can't take the dogs down, we would have liked to go in for a swim, but you could, we can't leave the dogs in the van, no. not in full sun. And the temperature today is like 33 or 34. This is my rule. Above 30 to 35, you need to be in the shade. Can Above pen and paper write this down, guys? <laughs> so, uh, I'll start again. <laughs> Up to 30 degrees with a breeze is quite manageable. You can even get away with parking in the sun with the right angle and all the shades in the window. Yeah, over 30, between 30 and 35, you have to be parked in the shade and then that's manageable. Like today is about 34 and we're here in the shade all day. It's manageable. Over 35 is getting a bit much, even in the shade. When you hit 40, you're absolutely screwed. Comatose. Comatose, can't do anything, can't turn your laptop on. Yeah. You're just surviving, just waiting for it to cool down. That's the rules mm. of the summer and that's us and we're used to the heat and our dogs are used to, our, used to the heat. So if you're from Northern Europe countries and you're not used to the heat, then forget all of that. It's, a lot, it's going to be a lot hotter in all of those situations for you this time of year. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you get every last bit. No waste, darling. Every last, you can lick the bowl if you want. No waste. We got any bowl lickers out there? Darling. How many of you are bowl lickers? You're a bowl licker. <laughs> Get in there, love. Get in there. A bit of a tight squeeze, it's, isn't it? They're not folded properly. So we have been down here, as I think we mentioned, for all day. It's like seven o'clock now, is it? Or after seven o'clock? But it's fine. We've still got a couple of hours of daylight and it's going to be a lot cooler for where we are heading to next. We found somewhere on the map. We said, oh, well, I said, I don't think we've been here before. And Nick was like, yes, we have. So we'll see. I don't think I'm going to remember it because it was a long time ago. Good boy. We've arrived at our destination, which is the pretty little Hilltop town of Vahair. Um, it's only about a half an hour drive, just inland a little bit. It's a pretty little town, whitewashed town, set on a hillside. I think there's a part of the town is walled and there's a little castle and stuff. I've been here before, as we said before, but years and years ago. This is our park up for the night. Bit of a sloping, dusty car park, but really easy access. Lovely little dog park there, which is the track, which is what attracted us to this spot as well. Unfortunately, Charlie wasn't up for socialising. I think he's a bit tired, um, so maybe, maybe he'll feel better in the morning. But I think we're just going to go to the supermarket, get some cold drinks, and um, have a quiet one, and then get up first light tomorrow, and go and explore this little town. It was very hard trying to film nice scenes on the way here because the windscreen is so filthy from the campsite and we can't clean it because you need to probably go to a proper jet wash. It's got all of that sappy stuff stuck to it and all pine needles stuck to it. I mean, I don't want to go up and have a look at the roof that we've only just cleaned about, you know, a week or two ago. I bet that's absolutely minging population of the the region or the town itself the, town of the, the old town or the new town the town of the hair the whole town i think it's about four and a half thousand no 12. oh so you were well off i think it was four and a half thousand when we last came here mm. it's grown a bit that's just making it up as he goes anyway along. i did anyway. tell them that we're probably not going to be going into the town tonight because she's feeling a bit lazy well, no, because I'm so. thinking, well, if we don't, then what are we going to have to eat? So we might. We oh, might. we are. You'll have to keep watching to find out.
Unfortunately, in this scene, as we made our way into the town, we forgot to turn the microphone on. But basically, the gist of the conversation was that I was pointing out what a pretty little dress Sarah was wearing and she should wear them more often. That's when I stepped in and said, stop taking the mickey out of my one euro dress. Yes. This is a one euro dress from our local markets. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Cheers, darling. Cheers. Cheers. Well, we found a table. Unbelievable. This place is so busy, but we sneaked in in front of all of these people waiting, grabbed the table, sat down, ordered, and here we are. We were a bit naughty sneaking in before others. Well, we weren't. I mean, there's just so many people. Um, it did look like we were eating in the van. But anyway, we have a little bit of Kazon de adobo, I think, is it? I don't even know the name in Spanish for that one. Just pointed to it, didn't we? we just pointed to it. Mm. Is it a good one? A good one. We're very late eating tonight. It's like 10, half past 10. Quarter to 11, yeah. Late, quarter late. to 11, which is like the normal Spanish time for eating. Um, yeah, we usually eat like, I don't know, about nine maybe, nine-ish. So half past 10, quarter to 11. If, you, if we did come out at nine, half past eight, nine o'clock, there would have been loads of tables free. Now is just the busiest time. People still sitting down. This table behind us with a little kid, they've just sat down and it's quarter to 11, you know. Yeah, we came out when we arrived here, people queuing for tables. I don't get that. I know you have to, sometimes the restaurant's busy. I'll be so frustrated just waiting, watching people eat. We don't usually do crowds. Do we? And that's the reason why. There's like loads of little kids just like running towards the table and running up and down and screaming. I've got Dizzy on such a tight lead around my leg so he doesn't charge out and like attack a small child. But anyways, next door is like a big kind of, um, what do you call it? Food court. Food court, yeah. Oh, we didn't even know that was here, even though Nick says that we've been here before. We've been here, we just went to the old town. The old. This is where the old town starts as it goes up the hill. We've already walked downhill, so we just saw the old town at the top of the hill where the cast is and stuff. Yeah, it'll be nice to have a little walk around in the morning, I yeah. think, because it is a lovely place of what we've seen tonight walking through. Anyway, we're waffling. We're waffling. So, uh, cheers. Cheers. I'll end with a cheers. Good morning, good morning, Nicholas. Good morning. I reckon any moment now you're gonna to have to move. Yes. So. Not so good morning though. We woke up in the dusty car park this morning um, to a load of um, builders moving big things of big bricks. pallets of bricks like a metre away from the van, not where you want to wake up to. No, really. I think not they the loaded them onto the cranes that were there. Um, so we thought we'd better move just in case and it's very windy and dusty so we've come to this car park in town and it's full up completely there's no spots and there's definitely no spots for a big one charlie's a bit funny this morning he's a bit lethargic and uh worry with little charlie he's uh he's okay but he's just very sleepy and and things so we're worried about him so I think we're going to call it guys. I think we are going to head back to our village and we'll have to come back here and check out the old town again. I mean, it's probably better to do this coast in the winter. We're forecasting another 35 degrees today here. And it's, it's a little bit too much for the doggies. Basically, it's already hot now. I don't know what temperature is, but yeah, it's just before 10 o'clock mm. and it's in the 30s. It's very difficult in July and August. It's kind of like that wherever you go, let's face yeah. it. You know, wherever you are, you know what it's like. July and August, busy, busy, busy. Everywhere's busy, full and, you know, hard to find parking and all sorts. Nick's got his appointment tomorrow anyway. Day after. Day after tomorrow anyways. So we're gonna go back, get that sorted out, get what we need to sort out on the van before we cruise north. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Make sure little Charlie's okay. I don't know whether he's bashed himself. He sleeps in the front. Charlie has the whole front seat, so it's very comfortable for him. He's fine last night. 
So we'll just see how we go on the journey. We'll probably stop off and uh, have a coffee somewhere and let him stretch his legs as soon as we find somewhere shaded. So should we should we do that then? Yeah. It's too hectic. We will show you the hair a little, in a little bit more detail because it is a beautiful, very, very pretty little town. Hence the reason it's so, so touristy and busy because it is really lovely, but let's cruise on then. Good morning guys, we are back in the village, all safe and sound. Charlie is doing a lot better. Yeah, Charlie's all right. Mm. He was just a bit lethargic, wasn't he? And um, he was fine an hour or so later. By the time we got back here, he was all right. He was happy to be lying on the tiles in our lounge again, I think. Yeah, we do worry <laughs> about him. Uh, the trial run went really, really well, I, I think We feel. tried out everything, didn't we? We were staying at um, Wild Camping for like four days, five days in the end and then a campsite it was quite good so we get to try out got to try out how long our power lasts for our power stations fridge and all that sort of thing the solar panels yeah we got the awning mm. out um you know all the way out had that out for a couple of days so tested out everything basically set up the full shebang and then uh, apart and from then, the shower yeah. still need to test the shower yes yeah, so that's the only thing we haven't done is had a shower inside the van quite proud of ourselves everything worked as it should nothing fell apart a list of little tweaks and a few things that we forgot and stuff like that but nothing major they're all like little things aren't they so we've learned we're quite forgetful we and were we, and we do half do jobs yeah basically <laughs> um we have just got some mirrors we finally found these are like they're like cardboard but they're not they're proper glass that's got a film on I top of it plastic, aren't they? they're really really good exactly what we were looking for and so we've got some of those to put here because we've learned we do need a mirror in the van nick's okay because he's got me and i say to nick oh you've got that long hair there and pluck it well, out I don't or, know what you're talking about. or if he's got something spilled on his face i want wipe it off he didn't do the opposite to me probably because he's not wearing his glasses all the time he can't see it so if i've got Rude. if i've got a bit of i don't know food like stuck in my eyebrow or a bit of toothpaste like down here i don't know until i you know go and use a public loo somewhere and look in the mirror and go oh how long has that been there we bought this as well yesterday which is that protective kind of flooring and that's for under the garage um just to protect the, the lino because obviously you're dragging things in and out like bikes camping chairs and things like that so i thought that was quite a good idea of nick's to get yeah full of good them. ideas yeah so the list is actually not as bad as it looks right darling yeah that's just a few things we forgot like the bike essential thing few little bits we need to buy just little things and then quite a big list of things we need to do but not major things like little latches on the stool and table to stop them from falling we've already made this for our little light remote control look at that the rest of the thing needs painting yeah here's another little job look these little screws the bits with the the screws with the plastic bits in or well, all of these covers we ran out of these screws mm. not screws bolts not bolts nuts with the little plastic bits because obviously in a van you can't just use normal nuts these ones have come undone so we're going to change all of those today and things like you're that little you hear jobs. a little thing dropping you know like, oh, oh oh that's me on that sorry about that maybe at this one anyway <laughs> so we should all be ready to go in a couple of days now nick has got his appointment today in, in fact, about five minutes in about five minutes hopefully we'll have good news and good updates and ready to be on the road next week if not if not, well, then we'll be here next week doing some sort of video, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll follow us for daily updates on our other socials. Don't and... forget to subscribe. Tell all your friends about us. Very important. Hit that subscribe button and it's absolutely free to do. And we'll see you all next Thursday. Yes, we will. Take care, guys. See you next week. Not amused, not amused. <laughs>